Good afternoon. We're on Hilton Street in the northern quarter. I wonder what archaeologists will make of the detritus of the 21st century, namely the amount of lateral flow tests. This one's thankfully negative, but I find lying around. Don't know. And uh, someone like me who walks around a lot looking at things, I'll uh, about one in ten discarded lateral flow tests I find are positive. Now, who in their right mind, you know, for the normies anyway, who in their right normie mind would discard a positive coof sample? Why would you do that? I'm getting a friendly beep. Hey, friendly man. Um, who would do that? I don't know. Well, it is lunchtime. People need sandwiches. Doesn't matter how many guns, how much body armor, how many magazines you're carrying. When nature calls and the stomach starts rumbling, you need to eat. Okay, we're in the ghetto now. Look at this, look at, look at it, look at it. This is like uh, the replicant's bloody apartment in Blade Runner 2049. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're currently on the top level of uh, National Car Park's NCP Car Park in the immediate city centre. We're here just on the northern quarter. A few of the sc skyscrapers around us. But what's interesting to note is not a single car. Fair enough, there's a few decks. But this is as central as you can get to Manchester. It is a Monday, it's a working day. But because of the... <coughs> and because the government has said, oh, Optimus Prime variant might give you a... <coughs> Everyone's obeyed, everyone's at home. No one likes the office anyway, so it's more complicated than just like, Aah! but still, just just look at it. Just look at it. I'll turn the camera around. Alrighty. Here we are. Good old Hilton Street and Tibb Street Junction. Highlight of the scene is ladies about to pick up some dog shit. Pick it up, Janny. Go on, janitor. They've made a mess. Pick it up. You know, guys, I get strong, strong ideas about pet ownership when, you know, the poor dog has to see its master literally pick up its shit, the thing it wants to get rid of, and you're like there, putting it in a bag, and the dog's like, what is my master doing? Coming up slightly, there are some residential apartments, here's a guy, and someone else, having a good time, having a good time, nobody's home. Charlie Uniform November Tango. Bravo to Delta. Uh, we've got two maskies uh, who are protecting each other against uh, the Koof. Even though uh, it says on the packet, this product does not protect against viruses or something like that. I am the surveillance man. I will get the tops of their heads and we will be done. I'm sure this is the numbers that the predator messes with before he tries to blow up Arnie Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Run, get to the chopper. Okay, it's a bit cold, but behind me there's a. I'm going to show you. There's some paintings as a painter, and though I find his style a bit uh, profane, perhaps you may describe it as a bit too baroque. And he seems to have a thing about everything disappearing in very formal lines into the distance, diagonal lines all... I don't know. My opinion is he, he's attended a few art classes and he feels he's the next Picasso. So I'm going to show you Baby and the Nuclear Bomb. See what you think. Space baby.
to commit Harry Kiri to. From Market Street, there's Rob. If you want a good coffee, opposite the entrance of the Arndale, there's Rob's van, and he ma and he's actually an Italian man making Italian coffee. Why not? Yeah. Okay. That's as good as mine. Cheers. Not long to go. The ho ho ho. What's this meant to be? Is it meant to be music? <laughs> All right, eyeball man's back. Let's see if he uh, rolls them back again today. Here he is, getting his little crystals and dragons and candles and bongs and pyramids set up. We're all crazy, aren't we? Okay, we're in the epicenter of the Christmas markets at the Royal Exchange, or the Corn Exchange, whichever you prefer. And uh, I can't tell which one of the shops was the lady who uh, is going to make a massive loss. But having had a quick peek at some of the stalls, the biggest mistake that these stalls make is just selling ordinary things that you can get either in a regular shop or on the internet. Like people aren't going to walk past and say, whoa, I, I must buy that now. That's amazing. I must. They'll just say, oh, that looks interesting. Uh, I'll make a mental note to order it online for cheaper tonight. I mean... I once went to a farmer's market in a little French town in the Charente Maritime of France called uh, Sablonceau and I walked around it and instantly I was like, oh my god, this is all so rustic. This, I, I might as well be in the 17th century France, like with uh, Louis XIV coming to fucking give me a fucking venison sausage or some wild boar cured ham. But these guys here, I mean this one here, soap. Really? Soap? Soap that you can get on the internet or in the shop? Nah. Bootleg Rihanna. Mark Rihanna is cheaper than booking the real thing. Okay, Piccadilly Gardens, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, little did I know, in fact, I did not know, not little, I had no idea that it was private land. Private. The Landover, Landover noticed that his footpath has not been designated, fuck's sake. You can read it, I'm struggling here. The public is permitted to walk along this footpath. This footpath. So, the question is, can you commit an environmental crime by dropping a cigarette on private land? Hey, how's it going? And another question is, this is private property. Did you know that? This is all private. So can the police arrest you for a public order offence when you're on private land? The answer is probably not. <laughs> but you take care. Thanks for saying hello. Take care. And he's playing copyrighted music, so we'll get another couple of seconds and cut. Guys, I found Gandalf the cop. Well, just like the other guy, they, they gotta eat, man. Oh, good, yeah, very well. He's shooting a YouTube, don't worry about me, guys. Oh, good. I like, um. I, I Hello. In 2002. Oh, did you? 18, 19 years? Wow. Yeah, 19, 19 years, I remember. Did, did all the, the uh, protesting on King Street. Oh, was, the Jewish yeah. shop, yeah. Oh, first, the good old yeah, days, yeah. 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 The protests were, pro <laughs> the, the, were protests. I know, the good old days. But enjoy your life. I did a comment, to be on out tonight. Charlie Veach is my name. Yeah, you're, you're Gandalf the White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thou shalt not pass. Cheers, and thanks for keeping us safe anyway. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys.
when you've been exposed to the Omicron variant, you're like, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna coof. I'm gonna, oh, oh God, oh, oh, I'm coofing everywhere. Oh shit. I've been studying a lot of body cam footage from American police. Not just American, any nation in the Anglosphere that carries guns. And uh, I've come to the conclusion after hundreds of police body cam incidents where someone gets killed, that the presence of the gun often saves the policeman's life, but very often is the cause of someone being murdered. Not murdered, killed, lawfully killed. Biggest example I see is a crazy person who is crazy, nutter, starts struggling for the officer's gun. It becomes a life and death scenario and the officer has to pump a few rounds into the crazy person. Now, 95% of police in Great Britain are unarmed. They keep doing surveys of the police in Britain. Do you want the shooty shooty? And they always overwhelmingly vote no, because British police have great experience dealing and arresting crazy people, deranged people. And the presence of a gun on your hip just gives it a new angle of danger, of crazy. And you would have a few cops each year murdered by their own pistols. So that is one reason why British police don't carry guns. There's some uh, art critics have arrived to uh, criticize positively. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that one with the baby. The baby. So in honor of the commenter who uh, was very persistent for years, literally years, he would comment about the uh, Kuvenhove Kalergi plan. And uh, I saw this poster and it reminded me of that poster, the commenter. So here's the joke. What do you get if you mix all these different groups from different parts of the world together? Boom. Now you're all the same. There you go. I've cured racism. Uh, pious Islamic ladies are face mask wearing champions for about 1,400 years. They've been uh, socially compliant for a long time. These two guys are Mormons. Now, if your definition of truth is functionality and continuation, Mormons have the highest birth rate of any group in the West. Okay, here on the Charlie Veach channel, you get all the best shots, including... Hey guys, you're right. Don't mind me. Just a YouTuber. You're right. I can never recognize you guys with the face masks. But I'm uh, just going to walk along just to show you. For anyone wondering why there, this is the case, it's a statement. It's a saying on my channel now in case people get a bit stabby, a bit bomby. These guys are here to sort it out. Yeah, right. But can I ask you a question? Do you think regular police should carry guns most of the time? Yeah, to my about that. I know. No, the reason I, I just did a rant about it, most cops would say no, because it would make the job harder with crazies trying to grab your gun. You watch those channels in America with the body cam footage. There's a lot of crazies trying to grab guns. Anyway, I'll let you guys work. Sorry for, for jumping in. You guys take care. You too. Thank you. 
Look who it is, guys. It's Crutchhead. Good old Crutchy. I just want to show you guys one of the side effects of uh, Clown World is we are at the highest terror threat level. We are at severe, as in an attack is imminent. But outside Barclays, a big multinational, multi-billion pound bank, you can have unattended very large bags. There's a two liter bottle of cola there for scale. And uh, who knows what's in it? We all assume, yeah, it's just some cracky's fucking belongings. But uh, yeah, if you were hostile, if you're wanting to be clever, you would disguise your giant device as cracky detritus, wouldn't you? Yes, you would. Speaking of crackies, where's my friend? There he is. There he is. How are you? How's things? Oh, I'll shake your hand. Go on then. How are you? Good to see you. Are you well? Stop fighting, dude. You look beaten up. You, have you been fighting? Uh, someone jumped there called Charlie the other night. Charlie? Charlie. It wasn't me, though. Some YouTuber or something. No, he sounds like a bad guy. Anyway, what's no, your name, anyway? Said he was drunk. Let's make peace. Should we make the peace? Oh. Let's make the peace. I'm good. Come here. What's your name? And say hello to the viewers. No, I'll what? say my name. People don't know my name. Okay, well, just say yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry and Christmas, people. Take care, dude. Take All care. the best to you. Yeah, man. See you. Stop take care. Stop people. I will. Oh, I'll stop. I'm trying to change the videos to not have any more. That's why I'm not causing... Yeah, you know. I'll, I'll, you're right. I agree. Yeah. Take care. Here's my friend, Fai. Fai sells accessories for telephones and uh, cuddly toys and so forth. And uh, Fai is uh, inter interacting in a confused manner with the crackies outside the Barclays. I wonder why. I don't know. Very busy. A lot of people streaming in. It's a Monday afternoon. Fair enough, some of them are working. Delivering di Saronno liqueur, but uh, mostly normies, people having a great time. Now, uh, this is like almost as damning for security as a bunch of nurses doing TikTok videos. These are the brave warriors here to protect us against uh, terrorists and stabbies and bombies. But they're having a great time chatting amongst each other, they get paid the same. And this is Shosek. You know, Shosek is the company that was indicted in the Manchester Arena bombing inquiry, public inquiry, because they were busy, they were in the toilet, they were smoking, they were hanging out, and they did not want to appear like they were singling out people of a certain ethnicity, even though he was mumbling prayers to himself, even though he was wearing a giant hiking backpack in the middle of summer in Manchester. Fair enough. But there you go. There's the illusion of security. It's kind of like oxygen masks on the airplane. The illusion of safety when we're all damned anyway. Manchester can be very strange. You know, a lot of things get ripped down straight away, but this poster here, I'll zoom in a bit. This poster here has been allowed to remain. And now I think it is funny. I quite like it. But uh, if it was, say, a political message that they didn't agree with, it would get dragged down straight away. Hi, my name's Charlie Veach, and you're listening to Rough Trade. Yeah. What's that, dude? I need exemptions. You're demanding to see my papers to come into the shop. You're not accepting it. You guys are ridiculous. It's a joke. I would never now buy anything from Sky because you guys have treated me like a piece of shit. Thank you, sir. Yeah, good luck. Take care of yourself. Fucking face mask, piece of shit. I walk into the Sky shop and uh, start chatting to the staff. He's like, oh, what's your first name? Charlie, brilliant. Let's have a look at these new fucking packages. Security guards that go, excuse me, and wear the mask. So I said exactly, I said, oh, uh, I don't wear the face mask. He goes, oh, uh, are you exempt? I said, oh, I don't want to talk about my medical and he actually goes, look, just, just put the mask on. And I said, no, no, I, I choose not to. And then the Sky staffer, he goes, oh, as of next week, it'll be a legal requirement for you to put the face mask on. And I said, well, we're not next week, are we? And they're getting exasperated. And then I said, look, 
I'm not interested. You've lost the customer. So I go into O2. O2, one of their guys comes up to me and goes, excuse me, have you got your face mask? And I said, I don't wear the face mask. And he goes, fair enough. Enjoy the shop. So it's not everywhere. There's some friendly guy stood here. What's he doing? Hello. These kids have uh, done the best joke ever. They've pressed the emergency stop on the... Uh... Yeah, best joke ever, kids. Yeah, really good, fun joke. Hilarious. Making other people have to walk up. You're fucking hilarious, kids. Well done. There you go. Okay, we're in uh, Next. Big uh, department store and uh, very few people wearing face masks. It's still normal in here. Birth face. Woo! I'm a grown-up. I know what went on here. Here, here he is. Here's the star. Here's the star. Here he is. Kojak. Big man. So I told you the story. I don't think there's some big conspiracy where Sky is saying no birth face. It's fear. Fear and the desire for control. The will to control. That need, you know? People that become security guards, no offense, no offense, but some of them are looking for that control that iron fist, that jack-booted fascist feeling. Oh yeah. And I think his biggest mistake was when he says, look dude, just put the mask on. Or show your papers. Nah, not for me. The smugness is unreal. The smirky, smug fucking We're in Primark, also known as Primani, and about 50% birth facers, and no one says anything. How you doing? One more! 